There are chicken nuggets on the table. People are sitting and eating in the dining room. This way, please. The girl points with her hand. Um, this. What about this? Thank you very much. A man with a straw in his mouth is sitting in front of a man. You order them every time we come here. You like them, don't you? A what? Well, they're delicious. The man smiled sharply. Tell me, do you know what kind of meat they are made of? I mean, isn't it chicken? You have no idea, do you? The man spoke smiling. What? Dude, you're scaring me. This place uses meat waste. Um. What is it? They collect expired meat, throw it in the washing machine, and wash it with detergents. Then they disinfect it with chemicals and then make minced meat out of it. Wow. What the hell, what a horror. Sir. An unknown man shouted at the man. There are other visitors in the hall. Could you keep your voice down a little? I was just joking. Sorry. Hey, let's get out of here. What for? Wait a minute, his friend replied. It's hot outside, I'll get tired quickly. Ah. You're right. But what the hell? It's only March now. All the people were sweating a lot outside. They say that only idiots catch a cold in the summer. March is not summer, his friend replied. Global warming is increasing every year. A man from the Healthy Earth Party shouted. Habitable space decreases by 1,000th every hundred years. The world is facing a serious crisis due to global warming. Our party. Everything was written in the news about global warming and the onset of the human crisis. Reading the news, the man was talking. It's so depressing. Ha. Humanity is destroying itself. The news is full of reports about how the world is going down the drain. The white-haired friend agreed with him. But tell me, why do you want to become a scientist in this doomed world? A climatologist, right? Why did you set such a difficult goal for yourself? Hmm. You know. There is a great demand for them now. I think they make good money. Said the brunette. Ugh, you're a snob. A friend answered him. What about you? An aspiring artist, what's better? The blonde man turned away and said. Stop being shy. My grandparents died of heat stroke. The blonde man was surprised by this. Oh, I see. University tuition is so expensive, but my parents decided to pay for it. I see. Then I'll leave it up to you to protect the future of this planet. The blonde man answered. Okay? The blonde man was surprised to look into the interior of the bus. What? Hey. What's happening? He stood in the middle of the bus. People turned off from the heat. What? What's happening? The next moment, the driver was wearing a gas mask. Driver, what's going on here? The blonde man was shouting. Oh that. The next moment, the blonde man lost consciousness. However, after a long time, he said. What is this place? A gym? No. Factory? But where am I anyway? Um, what? Whoa. So softly. What? What the hell? The blonde man got up from the disabled people in shock. What is this place? The place looked like a hangar of the dead. This one doesn't fit. Refusal. This way for you. Come on, get in. Lie down face up. You. Are you awake? Someone asked the blonde a question. Hmm. Probably the drug is not effective enough. I'm sorry for you, man. You're still so young. You can't run away from here. You better get ready, man. The blonde man didn't understand what was going on. Prepare for what? Wait. Where am I? These aren't real people, are they? Are we still in Japan? The blonde man was shouting. Ah. You are. The man in the suit was analyzing the blonde man. The second type. Said the man. What? What does it mean? The blonde man asked a question. What is this? A hoe flew into the blonde man's back. Hey, stop kicking, otherwise your wound will get even bigger and hurt more. Hey. Ow. Mizuguchi-san. He's the second type, right? Yes, it is. At that moment, the blonde man was screaming in pain. Come here. What are you going to do with me? It hurts me. Having brought the blonde man into the camera, the man told him. Stay there. Blondie asked the question, why? The man kicked the blonde man right into the camera. And now go. The blonde man was rolling down the conveyor belt. Your mother. Ow. What is this place? Where am I? Is anyone here? What? Pipes? Looking around the area, the blonde man said. What the fuck is this? There were a lot of fat people around him. Is this all real? Looking around the area, the blonde man spoke. So hi. Looking at the conveyor belt, the blonde man spoke. Damn. I won't be able to climb, it's too steep. Nope. 
if I hold on to the railing while I climb. Fuck. No luck. What are they doing anyway? They're drinking something, not paying attention to me. The man was drinking something from an IV. Kazoo. It's you kazoo. Hey say something, kazoo. Oh. B. Kazoo wiped his mouth. Don't groan at me here. What's going on here? Where are we? What's the difference? Do you want to try it? It's so delicious. Kazoo was holding an IV in his hand. Come on. What is it? The blonde man asked himself. Is it just water? No. Juice? She has a sweet smell like fruit. Damn, it's hot in here. Just one sip. The blonde man was already holding out his hand. Suddenly a dark-haired man appeared behind him and held his head with his elbow. Don't drink it. Who's that? The blonde man thought to himself. What? Don't you drink? Kazu looked at the brunette holding the blonde man by the head. Just after trying this stuff. You become a completely different person. Those who drink it lose control of their own minds. Look, we're all drinking. People were shouting. Come on, E. Give me your phone, pager, or whatever you have. Unless you tell me what's going on outside. What is he talking about? The blonde man thought. If you don't give it back. I'll break your arm and wring your neck. Damn. He's too strong. I can't breathe. Am I going to die? The blonde man thought to himself. That's enough already. It's not worth lashing out at each other. The stranger said. Too rude, right? He'll be useless if you kill him. I'm sorry for his behavior. The man with glasses said. After these words, the brunette released the blonde. Your mother. The blonde man exclaimed. He was trying to start a conversation, although he doesn't know how to do it at all. Well, after all, we've already been here for three days and eleven hours. Please don't judge him on the edge of exhaustion. What? Three days? The blonde man asked. The man with glasses answered positively. Not happening. Have they been here for three days without food? Who are they? The blonde man thought. Did it hurt? The man with glasses asked the blonde man. Please accept my apologies. The man with glasses put his hand on the blonde man's face. No. Step back. Oh. Waste of precious liquid. I'm Yamabiki, his name is Natsum. And you? What is this place? Where are we? Well. As you can see. It's a kind of livestock farm. The man with glasses named Yamabiki answered. For people, Natsum's brunette was added. Next, we see the ceiling of this oldest room. A young guy with white hair was shocked by the last words of a friend and asked in fear. A livestock farm. For people? The brunette, listening to this and comprehending the words, only closed his eyes. And the guy confirmed his words, only saying briefly. Yeah. Standing against a background of very fat people who were clearly being fed in the manner of pigs, the trio reasoned. The guy with glasses spoke first. Maybe it's a livestock farm for people. Or you could say that they fatten people here. The blonde man still could not come to his senses and believe in the reality of what was happening. Place. To fatten people? He asked softly. But that sounds crazy. In that sense. His voice was shaking violently. His companions in misfortune stared at him in silence. I mean, if we're here, then they'll kill us and eat us, right? He came to a conclusion. His facial expressions screamed despair in his soul. His panic grew and he turned to screaming. And anyway, can a person eat another person? This is cannibalism. It's impossible. The guy opposite answered almost calmly. You're right. It usually is. The guy, after her answer, silently turned around and left. Leaving his comrades to look after him. His gait was fast and his footsteps were loud. Then he started hitting the wall crazily and screaming. The faces of his companions were filled with incomprehension and fright. Meanwhile, he continued to pound on the wall. You are welcome. Open the door. A guy was screaming with red eyes. Then a hand was placed on his shoulder. He turned around in confusion. The next moment, a strong blow landed on his jaw, knocking him off his feet. The guy fell on his back. Then, rising a little, he rode loudly. Ow. It hurts. But when he looked up, his eyes were filled with horror. A brunette and a guy with glasses were standing over him, and the guy, raising his hand to strike, said. I should have wrung your neck. There were sounds of blows against the background of fat people. The guy, who already had a lot of blood on his face, continued to scream. For what? The guy with glasses, watching all this, spoke. Natsun, try not to kill him. After his words, the brunette lifted the guy by the breasts. Then he said. Why the fuck did you do that? 
The guy, who found it difficult to speak because of the pain, answered quietly. What is the problem? For what? The guy, hearing a strange sound behind him, turned around. Natsun, noticing this, tried to warn her. Listen up. Don't turn around. The door to the hangar began to open slowly. And the more it opened, the more the terrible silhouette hiding behind it became visible. Well-fed people paid attention to this. The three main characters did not lose their heads, and they pretended to eat too. The blonde man was glancing towards the toilet outside the door. The brunette also took to the phone. And the girl pretended to be asleep. Everyone remembered Natsun's words. Listen, if you don't want to die, pretend to drink this liquid. Pretend you've lost your mind. And no matter what, don't turn around. Remembering these words, the blonde man thought. Why? Why did he say no matter what? Suddenly, a sharp sound crashed into his ears. He began to think about what it might remind him of. And then he realized that the sound was comparable to a crawling snake. And then a huge tentacle came into his field of vision. It flashed right in front of him. The guy, horrified, began to think what could be behind him. But Natsun's words about not turning around kept coming to mind. But that didn't make the thought of what was behind him go out of my head. When he saw the tentacle reaching out to one fat man, he tried to figure out what kind of creature could have such. Then the tentacle swung sharply. And with one blow, it split the man in half. From what he saw, the guy even dropped the pipe from his mouth. Meanwhile, the tentacle hovered over the dead carcass. Then it grabbed her and lifted her into the air. The body was carried right over the boy's head. He pressed his lips to the receiver again, but the question never left his mind. What is it? What is behind me? The frame moves away a little, and we see a huge caterpillar-like creature that has already brought the human body to its disgusting mouth with its tentacles. It began to eat him with its double mouth. But then we see other people sitting on the ground. A woman is split in half with one blow. But it didn't end there, and other appendages began to appear in the monster. The massacre began. The heads flew off one after another. And then we see a creature with dozens of heads strung on its tentacles. The guy at the epicenter of this horror was panicking and trying to figure it out. What kind of monsters are these? And then, suddenly, one small tentacle appeared near his hands. Oh shit. It got to me. The guy thought in a panic. Go away. Go away. Go to someone else. Panic thoughts raced through my head. When it got to his mouth, he thought he was ready to scream. But suddenly he turned his gaze a little. Natsun was surrounded by dozens of tentacles, which caused the guy an unprecedented shock. He looked at it and couldn't understand it. He couldn't understand why he didn't move. But he remained absolutely calm. While the guy was watching him. These vile appendages were making their way into the guy's mouth and nose. Then he noticed that the tentacles were starting to retreat. The whole vile pack is leaving. The creature itself, apparently sated, began to turn around. It crawled viciously with its entire huge bulk. The guy could exhale with relief, but he didn't dare turn around. Is it over? Are we safe now? He thought. The creature crawled out the door. Suddenly, a strong man appeared behind this very door. Two people in special suits and with cleaning tools entered the room. Looking at all this horror, the man's face in a special suit did not express any emotions. Despite the fact that there was minced meat of people under his feet. Ah. What a mess. That was the man's reaction while he was getting water. This kid only scattered a few tolls. His stomach must have shrunk a little. Two cleaners were having a dialogue with each other. Get out of the way, fatty. The man said, pointing at him with a mop. The fat man just screamed loudly. I feel a little sorry for them. Said one of the cleaners. Why all of a sudden? The second one asked. Well. The man began to reflect. They will be sent to feed the younger dismembered and put in the refrigerator. But they have families. I really feel sorry for them. The janitor with the mustache paused for a moment. Then he said. Well, I don't get paid for sympathy. They were just unlucky to be caught and killed. Thanks to them, everyone else can live. In that case, you should be grateful to them, not sympathetic. The second man still did not change his point of view and only giggled ironically. Suddenly, the man was distracted by something. A severed limb touched his groin. Yamabiki appeared behind me with wild eyes and said. Hello there? The janitor was terrified. He quickly ran to the side. A severed hand flew to his feet. The man screamed in horror. You're overreacting. Yamabiki said, reaching for his hand. Her vagina should be here somewhere too. He said with a smile. The cleaners were shocked that there were normal people here. 
When the man with the mustache walked forward, he was grabbed by the arm. The next moment, a strong blow from Natsune flew into his face. The falling body passed right next to the blonde man. Well, then. The guy spoke, kneading his knuckles. What'll we do? He said, under the surprised gaze of the blonde man. Yamabiki was laughing madly. Let's undress him. It turns me on so much. He shouted, under the man's pleas to stop. Honestly, I like guys like that. He said. The man was panicking. I'd like to stick my thing up your ass. These words made the man panic even more. But not today. Yamabiki said. You're going to eat this today. With that cry, he shoved the feeding tube into the man's mouth. The blonde man was watching this and couldn't figure out why. Turning his gaze to Natsume, he saw that he was doing the same thing. After a while, two cleaners sat and humbly ate the contents of the tubes, saying that it was delicious. Since they're here now, we have no other choice. Yamabiki said. The guys began to change into the clothes of the cleaners. In just a moment, Yamabiki and Natsune were ready. The blonde man, looking at this, was only perplexed. Who are these people? He asked himself. We were lucky that they sent two cleaners. Thanks to them, we won't have to fight for clothes. Lucky? Those who wear these suits can see what real hell is like. So we can figure out the true purpose of all this, since we are leaving here. Yeah. There were two men standing in front of the guy. He was scared. The man looked at the guy and he asked. Are you two going to escape from here? Well, yes, that's the plan. One of the guys answered. The guy got up and said. I'll help you. What should I do? The man pointed his finger at the people sitting behind the guy. Drink this stuff and stay here. He said. What? The guy asked. Looking at the overweight man who was happily drinking the liquid pouring out of the tube. No. But. If I drink this, I'll lose my common sense. He said in response. The guy with glasses smiled and answered. What's wrong? You will stay here forever. Okay? The guy wanted to object, but he was rudely answered once again. No. The guys pulled on masks and were about to leave. But one of the guys decided to tell the guy. If you come with us, you won't be of any use anyway. Turning around and leaving, he finished his words. Well, have fun. The guys left, leaving him alone surrounded by fat people drinking a strange liquid. What should I do? Leaning on his knees, the guy asked himself. The guys were already at the door when one of them decided to turn around. He saw the guy fall to his knees and something sitting in the middle of the crowd. He turned away from him and continued on his way. The next moment, the guy asked him. Do you know what's going on there? The guy turned around, looking at him questioningly. Isn't it too reckless to try to get out of here without having the slightest idea what's going on there? Well? The guy asked, coming closer. At this time, the guy was drawing something with the blood of one of the previously killed people. The guys were watching from behind. Wow, that's it? Photographic memory, right? This is the first time I've seen this. That's cool. The guys looked at him in amazement as he drew. So you've memorized the layout of this building, right? I've had this ability since I was a child. I can draw a lot of what I've seen. The next moment, the guy turned to them. I'm the only one who knows approximately how to get out of here. Trying to get out of here is like playing an RPG without a map. The guys grinned and turned around. Hey, right? If we slow down because of you, we'll leave you, okay? Okay, then, how are we going to get out of here? Maybe there are clues in the costume? Then the guy found something in his breast pocket. Found. Bringing the card to the door. Does it work? Yeah. The guy answered. Damn, it's so cold in here. So, where is our indispensable guide? I have no idea. Forget about him. The next moment, when the doors had already started to close, there was a sound of footsteps. He jumped out a moment before the door closed, dragging a man with him. The guys were surprised and asked. What the? The guy who was pulled out by E was asking for water, and saliva was flowing from his mouth. The next moment, one of the guys grabbed Yi by the clothes. What the fuck are you doing? He asked. I'm taking my friend with me. Do you mind? Fuck you. Said the guy. He asked. Will you hit me again? Do you think you can solve everything with violence? Then someone called out to them. They both turned around. What are you doing in this area? The people who arrived asked. All three of them were sweating and looking at them. Uh, it looks like he hasn't reached the condition yet. The guy with glasses answered. One of the employees just looked at them questioningly. Are you talking about the slush? He asked. To which the guy pointed his finger at him and happily said. Yes, about the slush. So you're taking him to eat up? 
Yeah. He replied. At that time, Yi's friend was standing at the door and trying to get inside. Stop fooling around. Go to work. The staff responded and moved on. Then the guy with glasses saw the chain they were pulling. Yi stared in surprise into the darkness from which the chain stretched. The next moment, they saw that several tied people were pulling on the chain. Their eyes were blindfolded, there was a gag in their mouth, and their hands were tied behind their backs. The whole company was surprised and the rest of the staff noticed it. What? Is this the first time you see manufacturers? Oh, yes, the first time. Oh, so you're new? Pancake. Haven't you been trained? Okay. Patting one of the people on the chain on the shoulder, the employee said. Well, will you bring them yourself? And I'll show you something interesting. Something interesting? And what is it? The employee began to lead them away, and at this time he was leading his friend to the side. Where are we taking them? Thought he. The next moment, one of the people on the chain was pointing and so's signal with his finger. In the room where they came there was a bunch of cages with women who stuck their hands through the cages and reached out to the men wanting them. All three of them were very surprised because they did not expect to see such a thing. This is the place. Hey, hey, let's have some fun, one of the girls said. Let's. You can touch it, you love a woman's body. One of them was talking, seducing the newcomers. The other girl clung to the metal bars of the cage and screamed. Why? Why don't you want me? What's wrong with you? Are you impotent? How old do you think she is? The guy with glasses looked at the employee questioningly. Years old? Her? The guy was puzzled by such a question. At this time, the girl was licking the cage and begging. Give it to me quickly. About 18? Right? She is 18, the employee confirmed. Is she 18? Well, if you give birth to so many. The man answered. At the age of 18, she already has 20 children, she is an excellent producer. We drugged her, so she lost her mind, 24 hours a day she is overwhelmed with the desire to reproduce. She has huge breasts and long hair, this is because her female hormones are going crazy. Moreover, we give her pills that stimulate ovulation, so she can be fertilized several times. In other words, she has two children, because she gives birth to three four children at a time. Although, when she gives birth again, we will get rid of her. That's how her life will end. At that moment, they heard screams and turned around to see a huge pumped up madman. And this? This? We provide manufacturers with various stimulants. Stimulants? Yeah. They're awesome. After one injection, he thinks only about mating. Until he dies. He will continue to mate even if he gets tired or bleeds, a sad sight. Are there such drugs? Of course. They have created such cool drugs. Which cannot be abandoned. They? Yes, I agree. The next moment, he ran into the employee and grabbed him by the neck. Who are they? And where are we? Get off. The employee shouted, throwing the E away from him. The next moment, a guy with glasses appeared behind the employee and said. Let's all calm down. Sticking a syringe with the drug into the employee's neck, he said. He won't tell us anything anyway. He's just a humble worker. The guy immediately fell to the floor, and the guy with glasses walked on, grabbing the second employee. You'll bleed out if I cut your vein. So, stand still, okay? Showing the syringe to the employee, he was scared. If you inject it. The next moment, the guy with glasses grabbed both employees. Throwing them into the cage, he said. Play with each other. One of the employees fell down and said. It hurts so much. He attacked me so suddenly. The next moment, he noticed that something was wrong with his partner. His partner began to undress, taking off his protective suit. What are you doing, Kondo-san? He asked, pressed against a wall. At that moment, his partner attacked him. Stop. Fuck off, you bastard. It hurts. And the guy with glasses was watching them. Wow. I didn't think it would work so fast. Can you believe it? Just one sip turns you into an addict. A huge amount of calories come from this liquid. A drug that dramatically increases sexual desire to the point where you lose your mind after one injection. I've never heard of this before. Whoever runs this place is on another level.